I will do what queens do. I will rule. Jon Snow brings the fight to the traitors, and we find out just how much of an influence Littlefinger has had on the entire world of events. Welcome to the top five moments from the episode, followed by the overall verdict. In the light of the seven, I now proclaim Tommen of the House Baratheon, first of his name. Long may he reign! Long may he reign! We kick off the episode with Tommen being crowned king. Cersei notices Marjorie and heads over to chat. Half expecting her to threaten Marjorie, she surprisingly starts talking about Joffrey, saying that she knew all along what he really was. And we learn that the Lannisters and the Crown were in serious debt to the Iron Bank, and that only meant that the alliance with the Tyrells was even more necessary than it already was. Who was the last decent king, I wonder? He could be the first man who sits on that throne in 50 years to actually deserve it. The hell you're doing? Practicing. What ways to die? Arya is practicing her sword skills by the riverside, and as the hound approaches, he mocks her, and asks her to give him his best shot. The hound, I'm afraid, teaches hard lessons. Go on, do it for your propulsive friend. <coughs> your friend's dead. And Meron Trant's not. Cause Trant had armor. And a big fucking sword. Would that be enough to take King's Landing? The Lannisters have more. 8,000 unsullied. 2,000 second sons. It's hard to say. Could be enough. Danny and her council discuss the idea of attacking King's Landing, as news spreads to them that Joffrey's dead. The question is, do they have the manpower to overwhelm it? Danny discusses her next move with her most trusted advisor. I will not let those I have freed slide back into chains. I will do what queens do. I will rule. Well, in all truth, I never expected Locke's fate to go down like that. After he scouts out the camp and finds Bran, he tries to take him away. But he didn't get very far. Someone who we know very well stood in his way. Jon Snow goes head to head with the leader of the traitors, Carl, who will be victorious. <laughs> My overall rating for this week's episode of Game of Thrones is an 8 out of 10. For once in Game of Thrones, the ending sequence was very much a crowd pleaser. Jon squaring off against Carl, and then to have him get stabbed in the back by one of Craster's daughters felt right as well as justified. Given that him and the traitors had been raping them for weeks, it was good that at least one of them could get their own back. And have that followed up by Jon putting the sword straight through the back of his head. It's about time that one of the villains gets a more brutal death, so give us more! Burn it to the ground, and all the dead with it. Danny's conquest this week came to an abrupt halt, 
after she'd been told that the cities she'd conquered had only fell straight back to how they used to be. Slave cities at that prompted her to delay attacking King's Landing and stay in Marine to rule and install order to the land. The big reveal this week that it was on Littlefinger's word that Lysa poisoned her husband John Arryn and that she sent the letter to her sister Catelyn. The letter which in a way actually started this whole world of events to begin with. So the more we are learning about Littlefinger, the more we actually find out how much of an influence he's been since the very, very beginning of the story. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you next week. Oh.